be a good little didn't check the stability of my overclock before doing mission critical recording computer. Good computer. So today we're going to be looking at an A1466 MacBook. The owner claims that this MacBook is not powering on. So let's figure out why it's not powering on. I have a feeling that it may have something to do with liquid damage. The reason I think it's liquid is because they said they got no liquid inside of it, which is a great way to know that they probably got liquid inside of it. So let's see what happens. I'm going to take my charger, plug it in, see how many amps it uses. Now, you look, it appears that the fan is actually spinning. However, the light is not turning on the charger. That's not a good thing. We need the light to turn on on the charger. And we don't have a light in the charger. And let's see if Paul Daniels' software can handle me opening a PDF with it. I put that PDF in your face. Now what's Paul Daniels' software going to do with it? Why do I have that stupid song stuck in my head? This is some one dumbass rapper that did that. And I, he, has, uh, he had this really dumb tattoo. Oh, am I kidding? Like that narrows it down. Uh, I have the worst crap stuck in my head. Stitches, yeah. I feel bad for you because you have that stuck in your head too. So this is where the charger is going to be allowed to talk to the SMC. Now the line that goes to the charger is this Sys1 wire line. And remember, this is different from the older machines in that all the one wire circuitry is on the DC inboard, which I don't have a schematic for. But from older schematics, we know that Sys1 wire is the line that's going to want to talk to the SMC. And the chips that allow the charger's data line to talk to the SMC on the Sys1 wire line are powered by PP3V42 and are turned on by SMC BC AC OK. Let's see what it looks like under this connector. I put that DC in board in your face. Now what are you gonna do? God damn it. Oh, that music sucks. I put this broken logic board in your face. Now what you gonna do with it? So we've got some corroded pins over here. What are those pins for? Well, that's a great question. Let's console Paul Daniels' board view software. Sys1 wire. PP3V42, and something for USB. The USB one, eh. Do you really need USB? Is that really that necessary? I mean, you got one port on the other side of the computer. Why do you need a port on this side of the computer? What kind of greedy prick are you? If you were buying a new 12-inch MacBook for the same price that you would have bought, paid for this MacBook Air just a few years ago, you get one port, not two. So why should I give you two ports back? Why should I put extra work in when I can actually upgrade this to a more modern MacBook by leaving the left port out? I think I'm gonna just focus on the charger. I'm trying to become Apple authorized. I want to follow Apple's aesthetic here. So do you really need a port on this side of the computer and this side of the computer? That's a bit too much for me. So what we're going to do, just take the SSD out so that I can fit a soldering iron in that little space. We're going to touch up those pads and see if we can get the charger light to be working again. Now for this, I'm not going to use the standard Hacko iron that I usually use. I'm going to use the Hacko FM2032 micro pencil. Let's see if we can make this look beautiful again. So a little, the first thing I'm going to do is scrape away at any of this nastiness over here. All right. As you can see, most of the nastiness actually goes away without a fight. And when you move away the nastiness, you'll see that it's not three pads that are broken. It's actually just this one. See, because if I touch this one, it doesn't move. And that's the test, by the way, for all of you who are wondering. After you solder a connector like this, you should take a set of tweezers and go through each pad each pin and see if they move when you put pressure on them. And if they move like this one, you know it's no good. What GPU do you use in your streaming PC? R390, I think it's an R9390. Clean it up. Some alcohol and a Q-tip. Now I'm scraping. And here, this is the opposite of what Jessa Jones says. So Jessa Jones says scraping is raping. By the way, for all of you who said that that thumbnail of my video was misogynistic where I said scraping is raping, that was Jessa Jones's catchphrase, which I took from her, a mother of two young daughters in Menden. But anyway, this I'm going to scrape. And the reason I'm scraping is because I want to remove the layer from the board that is, I want to remove that conformal layer from the board, but I also want to remove any of the junky corroded nonsense that may be left behind that is going to be on top of my copper layer so that when I solder the pin on, I get a nice connection.
here. Okay, we tap it up against the pin. Move it away. Make sure it's soldered nicely on the board. Rip off the excess. And now we see if this worked. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is replace that DC inboard cable as well. Because if you look, not only was the connection on the board broken, the cable itself looks corroded and missing pins. So for example, this one, this one, this one, this one. So I'm going to go and get a replacement cable. So let's see if this works with a new DC in cable. And there we have it. As you can see, not only do we get a fan spin, but we get a light on the charger. Focus. Focus, you bastard. <laughs> All right, no focus. Well, you get the idea. It works. Even if I have no clue how to use my damn camera. So that's it for that. You have a nice working MacBook Air. And the line that we were able to restore here, if we take a look on the schematic in the board view, appears to be the PP3V42 line. That's the one that I would expect to blow because that's the power line. I don't expect the data line to be the one that's going to corrode in the case of liquid. I expect it to be that the power line is the one that's going to corrode in the case of liquid. And that's what appears to have happened. And if you're interested in where you can find stuff like this, all the equipment that I recommend that you purchase for yourself is actually equipment that I list on store.rossmangroup.com. So if you go to store.rossmangroup.com and you're curious about the type of irons that I use, you can go to soldering stations, soldering irons, and you'll see a list of the soldering irons that I use and recommend, including the micro pencil. Now wait, it may say out of stock, but wait, there's more. You can click on the link and it'll bring you to my Amazon affiliate link where you can actually buy it on Amazon itself. Don't delay, buy today. And as you can see, the vendor on Amazon realized that I was linking to them, and as a result, raised the price, because they're a prick. But yeah, this, this seems to happen to literally everything that I recommend people buy on Amazon now. Everything that I have affiliate linked to on Amazon, they fucking jack the price up of. And this has been pissing me off recently since I had to buy the tips recently. So for example, I use the T30-KN, and see, this used to be $40.07. How much you want to bet it's like 50 bucks now when I go to Amazon to buy this tip? So we're going to click here, I go to buy the tip, and... Like, you, you cocksuck, you motherfucker. Look at it, forty nine ninety five. Fucking piece of... If you need a new DC inboard cable, you can find DC inboard cables at store.rossmangroup.com. If you go over to store.rossmangroup.com, you can search for MacBook parts by type. DC inboard, DC inboard cable. And the first one available is a DC inboard cable available for the low, low price of $5.99. It'll even detail the model MacBooks that it works in, and it has a nice, high-resolution picture that you can draw from. Don't delay. Buy today.